This is lesson 8.2, the Pythagorean Theorem and its Converse. Your objectives are to use the Pythagorean Theorem and to use the Converse of the Pythagorean Theorem. In a right triangle, the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs equals the square of the length of the hypotenuse. So with legs A and B and hypotenuse C, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. If those three numbers are whole numbers, then it's a Pythagorean triple. So no matter what, a squared plus b squared plus c squared works with a right triangle. Sometimes those numbers are decimals or fractions, but if they're all whole numbers, then it's a Pythagorean triple. Find x. Here we have a right triangle we know two of the legs and we're looking for the hypotenuse. So use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Remember A and B are always the legs and C is the hypotenuse. So A and B will be 3. 3 squared plus 3 squared equals the hypotenuse is X. So it's X squared. Solve for X. You get 18 equals x squared, and then square root each side. x is approximately 4.2. With a right triangle, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a and b are the legs, and c is the hypotenuse. Number two, we have a right triangle. The legs are 9 and x, and the hypotenuse is 15. So use the Pythagorean theorem to find x. a can be 9, and b can be x, and c is 15. Now I could say x squared plus 9 squared equals 15, because it doesn't matter which order you add. Just make sure the hypotenuse is always c. Solve for x. 9 squared is 81, and 15 squared is 225. Subtract 81 from each side, and x squared is 144. Square root each side, and x is 12. Number six, we have what appears to be a rhombus with the diagonals drawn. And you can see there, with the right angle in the middle, we have a right triangle. So use the Pythagorean theorem to find x. Eleven and x are the legs, and twenty-eight is the hypotenuse. Solve for x. 11 squared is 121, and 28 squared is 784. Subtract 121 from each side, and x squared is 663. Finally, square root each side, and x is approximately 25.7. The converse of the Pythagorean theorem says that if the sum of the squares of the lengths of the two shorter sides of a triangle equals the square of the lengths of the longest side, then it's a right triangle. Before we said, if it's a right triangle, then the Pythagorean theorem works. Now we're saying the converse. If the Pythagorean theorem works, then it's a right triangle. You can also notice that if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, it's a right triangle. If a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared, it's acute. And if a squared plus b squared is less than c squared, then it's obtuse. When you test it this way, just remember that c is going to be the biggest side. 
So it will be the biggest number in the formula. Determine whether each set of measures can be the measures of the sides of a triangle. If so, classify the triangle as acute, obtuse, or right. Justify your answer. Number 1. 30, 40, and 50. For it to be a triangle, add the two small sides up and see if it's bigger than the largest side. Since 30 plus 40 is greater than 50, then we can now test it to see what kind of triangle it is. We'll test it with a squared plus b squared, comparing that to c squared. Remember, c is going to be the biggest number. 30 squared plus 40 squared compares to 50 squared. You get 2,500 and 2,500. Well, those are equal. And since those are equal, that makes this a right triangle. When a squared plus b squared equals c squared, it's a right triangle. Number 2, 20, 30, and 40. Is it a triangle? Is 20 plus 30 greater than 40? Yes, it is. So it is a triangle. Now test what type of triangle it is. A squared plus B squared compared to C squared. C is the biggest side, so 20 squared plus 30 squared, how does that compare to 40 squared? Well, we have 1,300 on the left and 1,600 on the right. So 1,300 is less than 1,600, and that makes it an obtuse triangle. When a squared plus b squared is less than c squared, it's obtuse. Number 3, 18, 24, and 30. Is it a triangle? Is 18 plus 24 greater than 30? Yes, it is. Now, what type of triangle is it? Compare a squared plus b squared to c squared. Remember, c is the biggest number. So, 18 squared plus 24 squared, how does it compare to 30 squared? 900 and 900, well, those are equal. And when a squared plus b squared equals c squared, that's a right triangle. Number 4, 6, 8, and 9. Is it a triangle? Is 6 plus 8 greater than 9? Yes, it is. What kind of triangle is it? Compare a squared plus b squared to c squared. C is the biggest number. 6 squared plus 8 squared compares to 9 squared how? We get 100 and 81. 100 is greater than 81. When a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared, that's an acute triangle. So remember, if it's a right triangle, the Pythagorean theorem will work. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a and b are the legs, and c is the hypotenuse. If you know the side lengths of a triangle, test a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If it works, then it's a right triangle. If a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared, it's an acute triangle, and if a squared plus b squared is less than c squared, then it's obtuse.